On behalf of uh, Europe of Freedom and Democracy, uh, Mr. President Nigel Farage, the floor is yours. Well, this grand occasion, Mr. Barroso, your State of the Union speech doesn't, I think, quite put you on a par with President Obama because there is one fundamental difference. He, of course, is elected and you are not. And 48 million people watched his address and here in the European Parliament we even have to beg to get the MEPs to turn up to listen to you. And you completely, you completely ignored the State of the Union. You said what you, how you felt things were going. You pointed your way forwards. The Eurobarometer poll, the Commission's own polling organisation, tells us the truth. And it tells us that in the last six months there has been a dramatic drop in confidence in people's you know, belief even in belonging to the Union. A 10% drop in Germany. A 17% drop in Greece. A 9% drop in Portugal. And less than half of EU citizens think that being a member of the club is worth it. Even more revealing is that in your own country of Portugal, in the last six months, a further one in four people have lost total faith in EU institutions. That, Mr Barroso, is hardly an endorsement of success or belief. And yet, for most people today, there seems to be this great self-satisfaction. Well, don't be too satisfied, because the people have worked it out for themselves, the real state of the Union, it is increasingly, it is loathed and despised. And yet some claim this is because they want more Europe. Mr Verhofstadt said people want more common policies. No, the evidence, the evidence is clear. The evidence is clear. Interesting, President, when I barrack people, I get threatened with fines. But never mind. Never mind. The evidence is the more common policies there are, the less people like it. People have recognised the devastation of the common fisheries policy. They've recognised the inequality of the common agricultural policy, the lost business opportunities of the common commercial policy, and of course now the big one, the common currency. This ill-conceived political attempt to force people into a monetary union without ever asking any of them whether they wanted to be there. Well, it's perfectly clear that this currency doesn't suit Germany and it doesn't suit Greece. One is now trapped inside an economic prison and you can pretend the crisis has gone away but it hasn't because the bond spreads are now 8% on 5 and 10 year bonds. You can smile Mr Schultz but you know nothing of financial markets or how these things work. And in your own country, in your own country, well why should the German taxpayer increasingly pick up the bill? This form of government isn't working and yet what we heard today is we're going to have a common defence policy and a common foreign policy. And the other reason why these polls are where they are is people don't respect you because you cheated to get the Lisbon Treaty through and we were told it would simplify everything. But we'd know where we stand. Well, we don't. Who is in charge of this EU? Is it you, Mr Barroso? Is it my old friend Herman Van Rompuy? Is it the... Is it the Belgian presidency? Now that really is good stuff, isn't it? You still can't form a government in your own country and yet you're presidents of the European Union. I mean, whichever way you look at it, the whole thing is a bit of a dog's dinner, isn't it, really? The EU has never had so much power and yet it has never been so unpopular. But not satisfied with the 2.4 billion euros a year that is now being spent on EU propaganda, you want the overall budget to increase by 6%, and personally, you ought to have a full-time TV crew, we understand, to traipse round with you, new press officers, new webmasters. You're not analysing why this is going wrong, Mr Barroso, you simply don't get it. Mr. Nigel Farage, co-president. The row over the Roma in France today is, of course, caused directly by failing European Union policies. It was a huge mistake to allow Bulgaria and Romania to join the European Union whilst there were millions of people, millions of Roma, in those countries being heavily discriminated against. It is no wonder that now they're part of the Union, they're seeking to move elsewhere. And, and this goes with everything, doesn't it? Every single one of these policies fails, leads to a problem, whether it's this, whether it's the euro, and all the way through we see this fanatical 
political ambition to create a united states of europe regardless of the consequences and at no time has any of this been endorsed by the voting public that mr barroso is the true state of the union thank you today i have outlined how i see the european union doing that i have committed to deliver the proposals to build our economic union I have made a case to fast track our reform agenda. I have set out how to modernize our social market economy to deliver growth and jobs in a smart, sustainable, inclusive economy through our Europe 2020 flagship initiatives. I have set out how to achieve a common energy policy in Europe. I have defended the need for an area of freedom, security and justice, where Europeans will find that their fundamental rights and obligations exist wherever they go. I have made clear that the Commission will strive for an ambitious budget. I have proposed to develop EU project bonds to finance major European projects. I have announced our reinforced commitment to the Millennium Development Goals. I have made the case clear of why we need a common crisis response capacity and also a common foreign policy and a common defence policy. And I urge European leaders to act together if they want Europe to be a global player and defend European interests. It is indeed a transformational, ambitious, challenging agenda. For Europe to succeed, the Commission needs your support for a stronger, a fairer Europe for the benefits of our citizens. I thank you for your attention.